Okay, welcome everybody. This is Denny with Why Is This True and Get Wisdom. And Carl Mollison is joining us today for another uh, video uh, interview ser uh, series that we're doing with the channeling. And today we're going to channel uh, John Lennon. And Carl found out uh, earlier, a few days ago, that John Lennon had successfully transitioned into the light. So we didn't need to do a spirit rescue. And so I would... Uh, like to um, welcome everybody and uh, thank you, Carl, for joining me. And I, I would like you to, you know, just briefly introduce yourself. Tell us, tell us what we're going to do today for the people who haven't um, checked in with us in this series yet. Yes, thank you, Danny. Thank you for having me with this ongoing saga as it's turning into of uh, exploration and truth seeking, fact finding, filling in of gaps in knowledge and awareness. And it's, it, it, it's an amazing journey. Um, I, for those who have not watched one of these, I am a medium and a channel. I do lots of healing facilitation work. That's my real purpose for being and what I'm really moving forward with for myself, my own career, and developing powerful healing to, tools that I can use and, and teach others. And in the course of my channeling work, in connecting to a wide variety of beings, I have sort of worked my way up the hierarchy in the divine realm, and I'm channeling creator of all it is in addition. And it's been quite a learning opportunity for me. And one of the sad truths that comes forward is from creator, that no living human can be trusted 
to convey creator's wisdom and creator's truth of things. That's how bad things are. It's not that we're weak or stupid or foolish or selfish and arrogant, all the human qualities that can drag a person down. It's that we're being manipulated and deeply manipulated through subversive measures that take place below our conscious awareness, through mind control manipulation, through bombardment with external signals that go into our mind, direct hand-holding at a subconscious level by extraterrestrial psychics, contaminating our thinking, altering our beliefs, and many messages designed to just keep us complacent and be content with the status quo. So we never quite have the energy to really complain. We might to one another, we might not be happy about what we see in the media, but we don't write our congressperson, we don't take action unless we're motivated to do that by programming. So all of these marches that go on are engineered through mind control for people to, to show up to complain about things and march and demonstrate and then often break into violence if it's possible to engineer that. All these acts of terrorism are internal subjugation of person and manipulation. So the world is quite different than we think on the surface. And we know it's trouble, we know it's imperfect, that all the institutions need improving and so on, but that's deliberately seen to by the true overlords who run the world. So that's what I mean about people not being reliable. We all have the wool over our eyes. We have limited vision and insight and awareness. It's, it's just part of our culture. And it's managed on a daily basis, continuing basis. So one way to penetrate this veil is to go beyond it, go through it, to the light and talk with beings currently in the light to see what they can tell us about what is happening with humanity. And they can be a witness to what they experienced when they were incarnated here in the physical and often shed new light about the events of those days and what they did or didn't do in terms of this kind of horrific landscape. I just painted a portrait of for you. Sorry about that. But we're here to find reality as best we can and seek truth. And it's often not pretty. I, I can't help that. I did not want it to be that way. That's not my preference. I was happy back in the day thinking, well, we can find ways to heal ourselves and grow and expand and reach enlightenment and everything is going to work out and we're going to improve things and heal ourselves and the planet and we'll all ascend and transform things in a glorious way and all will be well and we just need to manifest that and so all the people out meditating and manifesting and so on are desiring of this meanwhile there are dark forces with a knee on our neck. And we're too dimmed down and dumbed down to realize it. We're anesthetized by all the happy talk, the encouragement to do wishful thinking and so on, and not address real problems with real solutions. And that is purposeful, unfortunately. So the people up in the light look down on all of this, and they see it all happening. And some of them have commented to me directly how amazing it is for them when they go back and they say, oh, nothing's changed. <laughs> and the ETs are still running around, pulling the strings and doing all these things. The dark spirits are swarming over us, draining energy, manipulating behavior and emotion with impunity. They're unopposed except for a few individuals like myself who work with the divine realm to remove these dark influences. So that's the backdrop and why I'm here 
And I hope we'll learn something from another figure of note who's been a part of our culture and, you know, bumped into the establishment a time or two and ended in a sad way. And yeah. that is often the fate of those who can see the truth of things and speak out and want something better and start to really question why things are the way they are. Yeah. A lot of whistleblowers disappear from the scene and they're silenced. So that's another tool that the, uh, the powers that be can bring to bear. Right. And there's, there's a whole suspicious about everything that happens like this and at least ask the question. Right. And there's a whole string of, uh, you know, people like John Lennon in entertainment, the rock and roll field and stuff. who had untimely deaths and stuff. And it was a, you know, attributed typically to drug overdose or some something along those lines, and then, um, but it's a, but there's kind of a pattern, you know, amongst some of the more outspoken ones or the ones that didn't really fit into the mold or didn't go along with a lot of the corporate uh, control within the entertainment industry, the music industry, and so, um, you know, it's 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 worth looking into and asking questions and. Uh, you know, John Lennon might be one of the one of the uh, the more notable ones to do this with. You know, we in this series. This is, I think, this is, I think, this is forty one. We've done forty. This will be number forty one that we've done, going all the way back to uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower in February of 20, 2017 was the first one that we did, and since then we've done forty of these. This will be number forty one, and. Uh, and it, for you know, we have some people who've watched these and they, and they and they and going through sequentially. And there's been you know, slightly more information revealed, almost like, well, now that you've learned this, you're ready for this. And there hasn't been anything, I think, earth shattering, but it's de it's developed a picture where we're getting more and more detail and we're uncovering more uh, features and facts along the way. And what we've tended to do in the series is is kind of move away from um, maybe you know neutral, you know famous but more neutral figures to famous and darker figures like Hitler and Joseph Stalin and uh, and Oswald and uh, uh, Jimmy Savile and and people like that who've ha who've kind of been on the darker side of things, um, and we, we're do we're doing that purposefully, and we get a little uh, feedback about well why don't you do the more positive subjects. And so I wanted to address that here. And the reason is, is that a lot of these subjects um, are in need of a, of a spirit rescue. And that's kind of a healing event in and of itself when Carl can perform a healing, um, a uh, spirit rescue. And then they have an option, the, uh, you know, the opportunity to actually tell their story. And I'm, and I imagine in the process of doing that, there's even more healing that occurs. And it has kind of a spreading effect. And maybe you can address that a little bit about how how that works and why we tend to lean more towards the darker figures in this in this channeling series. Well, yes, absolutely. Let me take the latter part first. You know why we do so much talk about the darkness. Well, the reason is when your house is on fire, do you need to look at solutions for that? Or do you need to look at the recipe for your brunch on Sunday with your group of friends and plan your Caribbean trip for the spring and, and so on? Uh, this is a question of priorities, personal priorities. I'm in earnest here because I have many people call me who are struggling and suffering. They have illnesses. They have various maladies. They have voices in their head. They have weird, creepy things happening in their house that are real, and everyone in the family knows it. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go to get help for this. There are people coming forward who have been involved with the extraterrestrials directly, taken into their program and made to be uh, uh, warriors for their agenda and killing people. This is the secret sp space program and what it is truly designed to do. It's creating a mercenary army of humans to use against humans. I'm, you know, sorry. So when we learn things like this, <laughs> uh, 
you know, we can't spend all our time talking about sweetness and light. And one of the other reasons is everyone else is doing that. <laughs> Almost to a person, every other spiritual person, light worker, channeler, spiritual leader, they're talking about sweetness and light, how great things are doing and the light is advancing and we're going to ascend and we're going to be talking to benevolent extraterrestrials and they're just waiting to come in with our gold from the secret treasures of St. Germain and on and on and on. It's coming. It's going to be here. The Syrians are going to land with the big ships. You'll see them in the sky and get ready and you'll go in your little light boxes and you'll be upgraded to 5D or 6D maybe if you're ready for that. And, you know, story after story after story, you know, in all the meditation, all the meditation groups, praying for the planet, working together to help the environment and so on. We have bigger problems right now. I'm not saying the environment isn't a problem. I'm saying we're in a fight for our existence here if we don't line up with the divine again in a hurry. We've drifted away, and all of those spiritual workers have moved away from the divine. They think they're being spiritual, but it's a personal belief in spirituality that is not involving the divine realm. They're doing it all on their own. And they're a lone voice. They've disconnected themselves, in effect, functionally from that option. So when we go back and talk to light beings, we're talking to the divine realm because that's where we come from. When we come down here, we're unplugged. <laughs> you know, we're light beings unplugged. We do have a higher self. We get some information from it and, and some help and warnings. That's our conscience. And we feel it when we stray and get reminded. And that state of being was engineered. And that was a corruption of us, so we would be disconnected. And that was done to create a slave race, which we became. And in a sense, we still are. So this is what we're working against right now. So one of the problems that befalls humans when they come into physical being Given the short longevity, which is a legacy from all of this darkness, it shouldn't be that we live only what we do. We should live 600 to 900 years easily. <clears throat> that was the original construction. Our DNA has been corrupted through many, many centuries of manipulation and tinkering through systematic abductions and genetic modification to study us, to learn about us, and to minimize our reach. So one of the things that does happen, unfortunately, when people die, rather when the body dies, they would normally return directly to the light. The light callers come to escort them. If a person is troubled, if they're struggling in some way, or if they become a non-believer, they don't expect anything beyond the last time they close their eyes. They're resigned to that. Or if they have been corrupted in some way to drag them down, they may not be able to navigate. They may not see those light callers there. Because if you lose all your senses, you have to create new ones. The people who don't use their intuitive ability, may have more trouble. So there's always an outreach, but they may not see that, that hand extending to them, so to speak. And then they're in limbo. They're tumbling about in darkness. And there are lots of dark spirits out there who will descend on them, try to rob energy from them and torment them to get that energy. So it's a very bleak existence for trapped spirits, the earthbound spirits. And so they need help. And the divine realm has to allow that because we're on our end, uh, on our own until we get back to the light. If we stumble, if we fall, we're still on our own unless we can ask for help. Many of these troubled spirits don't know to form that thought even. 
they don't have an ability to think the same way. They're used to thinking through their brain. They're not used to thinking in pure consciousness, which is what they normally do as a light being. They're not back in that mode yet. So they're in transition. They need help. The divine realm has to let them flounder, just like they have to let someone flounder who is on the verge of suicide and living a horrible existence, maybe homeless. God doesn't come down and grab them and put them in a mansion just because they're a nice guy and they had a bad series of uh, tough uh, losses. They have to find a solution themselves. They can reach out to the divine and get such help. The spirits have a hard time. The divine realm needs someone from the human side to make requests. So that's where we can come in to pray for our loved ones. So that's basically what I do. I do a kind of a high level prayer request and go in with a series of healing requests to raise their vibration and get them to a state of being where they can see and cooperate with the light callers. And then the full transition takes place. Right. And so with some of these darker figures, so if you're he like we talked about this before, we're healing the perpetrator rather than the victim. And that has a much more profound effect in terms of the healing that's done for humanity in general, because the tentacles around these these some of these figures is is widespread. I mean it goes back generations, affects many people, their families, etc. Um, you know, Jimmy Savile comes to mind as being one of those characters that we did it channeling with where you know the healing for him um, must have been profound in term not only for him but also for his victims so maybe you could address that a little bit about how i mean that that's one of the reasons that we're focusing on these dark figures from history and not just doing you know the kennedys or jesus or gandhi or um you know all these wonderful people in in the in the hum in the in you know in, in, in our known history yeah, sure. These these people who are a bit larger than life because of their impact are sort of the poster boys and gals of excess, of evil or selfish arrogance and exploitation of others or, and manipulation of others for personal gain and leave behind them many tragic victims in their wake. But they are really a larger than life sort of example of what can happen when people become corrupted and then maybe have a lot of power to use that corruption to worsen things. So the current news story of this period, one of them, is all the sexual harassment coming out into the open about so many people in all sorts of circumstances who have exploited females. All right, so what is that? It used to be thought of as, well, boys will be boys, and, you know, you just got to be tough and, you know, let it bounce off and realize there's not much we can do about that. It's hormones and so on. <clears throat> and now, of course, it's a moral failing and it's politically unacceptable and the people are scorned and they lose their jobs often. They lose their prominence. They're, they're toppling from their pedestals right and left. But this happens in all walks of life and all sorts of levels. There's many, many millions of cases like this out there. This is manipulated to happen. This is mind control manipulation to ramp up selfish impulses and sexual urges to make people suspend their normal constraints and indulge in excess. And it's happening continually as another way to make humans do wrong to one another, get themselves in trouble. So now all these pow pow powerful figures have made themselves vulnerable through this behavior they were manipulated to exhibit. And it doesn't matter that much to the ETs whether it's a president or someone in a corporation or someone in an office building in Podunk City. 
the effect is the same. It hurts the person. It hurts the people around them. It leaves bad feelings in its wake. It drags lots of people down. That's the game. So this this is kind of just a little extra you know comment I was thinking about and and you you triggered this in your question about these particular individuals some of them have had an involvement with this very issue on a very severe predatory side or a self-indulgent side we might view it as that left a lot of hurt feelings you know when a powerful figure is exposed to have dallied and it's titillating to those not involved in those circles, but you know, for those families and and friends, it, it it's it's quite alarming and quite tragic and sad. Right. right. And and that serves the darkness always. Right. right. So the act of healing these darker figures is a is you know, it's it spreads out to the victims. And you've actually if you can change you know, like for instance, there. You know, an, an example could be someone like Saville um, didn't get. You know, he eventually made it to the light, but then he comes back as a uh, incarnates again and has all this karmic legacy and falls back into the old uh, habits again and creates a whole new population of victims in another incarnation. Whereas this this uh, this intervention, if you will, with the spirit rescue, um, could could um, potentially heal a problem that works forward and backward in time. Yes, very much so. This is the thing people are not aware of and need to be, that much of the world runs via karmic forces. And what that is is really the energy of what happens affecting the future. So when you go down a certain path, and you work on yourself and have experiences in life, it adds more to your toolkit. And that creates a future destiny where you're going to use those skills. If you cultivate wrongdoing and develop talents for wrongdoing, that creates a likelihood you'll go back and continue that pattern. So people come back in life after life as perpetrators sometimes, but eventually karma catches up with them and the pain they cause to so many others starts to descend on them. So they'll have a life maybe as a perpetrator and then they'll be caught in the act. They might be jailed and live an entire life of horrors living in a cage. I've seen someone, a woman victimized again and again and again, who had a karmic history as a male in multiple lifetimes preying on women. And now this guy is back as a woman being raped over and over and horrifically, savagely traumatized. This is karma. It's, it's kind of a payback. It doesn't always work with punishment. It can work through obligations of service in some way. Yeah, it's a balancing. It's an, it's there's, an, there's a gentle way to heal your damage, and there's a tough way yeah, to yeah. rebalance it. But rebalance it, you will. It's right, guaranteed. Right, right, and right. some things are healed and forgiven through divine grace. That's why it's good to partner with the divine and get as much of that leniency as you can, in a sense. It's not God judging and punishing. It's karma. It's the energy we create ourselves. Right. And it's just it's, like, like building a house that's shabby. Right. And the, and the idea is not, not punishment. It's balancing. Yes. Right. So that's the word you can use instead of punishment to get away from the, all those old paradigms you know, that people are so phobic about. So, the, so the, once again, the, idea, the, the main reason I brought this up is because there is a there is a preponderance amongst these forties of the of the forty some odd people that we've done these challenges with that are their darker figures and there's a method to the madness there's a reason that we're doing that we're not we're not purposefully uh, avoiding the 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 bright lights of human history to just tell a dark story over and over and over again that's not what this is about it's the healing that that we're that's being gained um, 
that does that not only benefits the perpetrator who's a victim, but also their victims. And then the the ramifications from doing that on a repeated basis for all these figures in the history actually has a healing effect on the whole planet, on every living person here. So so the motivation for doing that is great because the payback is so great. So that's why we're focusing on these darker figures. So there's, there's a method to our madness and we're not trying to be salacious or just, you know, muck around for entertainment purposes. That's not what this is about. Yes, I, I do not find this in any way entertaining. It has its fascinations. But it, it, one tires of watching train wrecks every day. <laughs> you know, this is, that's the thing you would choose as a way to live. Right. No, and so I, I, I dive into that end of the pool where the waters are muddy and murky and there's blood and, and yeah. it's because there is a need and there's a need for people who can think clearly and find and bring to bear solutions that work. Right. These people don't need handholding. They need healing and deep healing. Right. And it involves karmic repair to really do it fully. Right. And that's a divine level problem. Right. So that's how they heal things through through healing the past and healing the future as well. It'll come back and influence right. us indirectly. OK, so I'm glad we took the time to do this. And, you know, I apologize that we take so much time doing this before the actual channeling starts. But these questions come up in the uh, comments on the on the YouTube channel where these where most people see these videos. Um that's not going to be the case much longer because we're, we're going to be moving them. They're actually going to be hosted on the new website, Get Wisdom, and that will be starting at the end of April. Uh, so in the meantime, um, you know, uh, they'll be, you know, we just we have to be responsive to the viewership. So that's why I wanted to talk about this because it does come up, and I, I'm not sure that uh, my replies have been well. My replies have not been this detailed. So hopefully, people who have come back, they'll be able to see this. They'll get a better understanding while why we have this list of, you know, people like Hitler and Stalin and, you know, <laughs> Saville. And, and we've got some more coming up um, in the same genre. So um, with that, Carl, I, I guess unless there's anything else that you'd like to say, let's go ahead and get started. No, I'm, I'm good. So okay. I'll just take a moment to get into the right frame of consciousness to do the work. And make my connection. I always go through creator because I want safety and accuracy to hit my target. And so I'm connected by creator. That's how I do it. And that helps to safeguard the process so an imposter doesn't step in. If that happens to a channeler and they allow it, the divine realm has to stand aside. They always defer to the human. Always, even if you're making a mistake, even if you're making a fatal mistake, they will not stop you. Your higher self might send a little bit of a warning just as an idea. You sure about this? You sure? Sure that's what you want to do? You know, that's that's the most you'll get because they have to allow free will and free agency. So so that's how I'm I'm going to do this. And then you will hear the voice of uh, John Lennon as the expectation come forth and announce that he is here. And uh, then Denny will be asking uh, some questions. Okay. Thank you. This is John Lennon speaking. Hello, John. Thank you for joining us. Was your murder instigated, inspired, or orchestrated by some U.S. government agency? Or was it more along the lines of a dark spirit or alien agenda manipulated event? This was manipulated entirely by the dark forces. It was not done through collusion with any human group or agency. They simply altered the mind of my killer and induced him to fixate on me as a target and in effect were pulling the trigger all along 
this is what they do. And this is a measure of their reach when they pluck someone from among the human community and twist their mind and heart to a dark end. There is always a kind of rationale that seems to make sense to the person at the time, but is always a manipulation of truth. And even the inner thoughts and feelings of the person in taking them beyond the bounds of reason all know about morality and about law and all are sympathetic to noble aims when they start out in life. The turning upside down is the manipulation in action. And that is the first alarm that needs to be rung when someone takes a life. One needs to look not just at their influences and upbringing, but also ask the question, if people have become disoriented and deranged, what is it causing this derangement? Society currently has this completely wrong in looking for a medical explanation. It is a mind manipulation always causing this from within and often from without as well, but done through a psychic means, an intuitive energy that goes in and tips the person over the edge. That was the perpetrator in my case. Okay, thank you. Can you describe your transition to the light? This was very, very easy for me. And in this, I was quite fortunate. I was a spiritual person and I had deep spiritual beliefs and thoughts all through my life. This was, first of all, because I was on a divine mission and was in tune and in connection with that. And even at the end, having had many blessings and even ending abruptly as it did, I was still in a state of inner contentment and inner connection with goodness and with high purpose and had many love feelings. And this is what enabled me to make a smooth trip, so to speak. I was able to see those who came for me and their energy and to receive in return the loving feelings they extended as an offering. So it was a glorious trip and a glorious reunion as well. The place I inhabit is a paradise compared to earth and a place filled with love and blissful thoughts and amazements of all kinds. So the contrast in making that transition from ordinary human existence to being in the light is a journey of tremendous joy and satisfaction. All who come into the world are there for a reason, for a purpose. Many times it is to heal something left undone, to clean up after oneself, as you two were discussing before connecting with me. This we all do. And this I did work on personally during my recent life. And I had many, many blessings, as you know, and was well above 
average in my lifestyle from conventional standards. I was constrained in many ways, inevitably, as all are constrained, because you live in an abnormal world in disconnect from a true spiritual harmony. This is what is lacking. But I was able to reconnect much better than average. And this was a tremendous blessing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Paul McCartney and the allegations that he actually died in the 1960s? This is not a true story. It is a kind of disinformation and is an example of the workings of the powers that be who bring forth many differing accounts of everything. This includes stories in the news, writings in various books, and even information considered the basic human knowledge agreed to by science all have variations, all have differing interpretations, all see the data through differing eyes. There are many anomalies in life because of its twists and turns, its ups and downs, and times when people appear to be out of character. All have explanations, very few are understood. There are inner conflicts and sources of confusion more than people would think. People assume others are often better off than they are, as they appear so competent and unruffled and so confident if they are in the media eye, for example. This is often far from the truth. And so when people have a moment of unusual behavior, one may read something into that for a false reason with a false explanation. In most cases, something sinister is going on. It is often simply the own person's negative history catching up to them for a time and causing some aberration. But it can be outside manipulation and internal manipulation by dark spirit influences habiting the energies, conspiring to cause a manipulation and changes in what takes place. This is the rule, not the exception. Both forces are at work. No one escapes entirely their influence. There are a few who stand strong, but they are in the tiniest of minorities. This is simply the truth of things. Being influenced and interacting with dark forces does not mean total subjugation. It only means there is an inner contest, a tug of war, so to speak, going on. And it does not guarantee the darkness will win in a large sense, only that there is doubt as to what may happen and the reasons for any emotion or action can be questioned to some degree because of the mix of intentions at work governing human experience. So he was always himself and this was simply a misinterpretation of things. Okay, thank you. Now that you are a light being, would you say that, that there were any dark or alien manipulations in your creative process when it came to the music that you wrote? 
Or would you say that some, some, some of your songs were divinely inspired?